Hi, in this tutorial, we are building a full stack TypeScript application, which means that we are using a single programming language, TypeScript, on the back end and on the front end. Specifically, on the back end, we are using Node.js, and uh, soon I think we will switch it to Dano or Dino. And on the front end, we are using Vue.js version 3 which is the upcoming version of this UI library or framework, whatever you call it. The idea for this tutorial is to build another task management application. But contrary to other tutorials, we will not only stop on the front end, but we will try to go deeper to the back end. And then I want to show you everything in between, including deployment and, you know, all the configuration needed to fully create a full stack application in TypeScript. So last time we implemented this uh, funny animation placeholders using CSS. So when the application loads, we have this indication to the users that something is being prepared. So we are cheating here because we don't have a backend yet and it's just a delay. And today we will try to implement this very basic persistence layer. And I think I will split this into maybe two or three episodes because there's a lot to cover here. And today we will see how to design a very simple database schema, how to create a table, and then how to connect it with our application. And I want to show you two ways of doing that. I will show you my way, which is like an old way, old school way, let's say. And then I will show you the way I would like you to use when you're programming. That means a modern way, a way that is aligned with my goals for uh, Kratos. And yeah, I forgot. We are also using this tool I'm creating called Kratos, which is a boilerplate for TypeScript application, which is a tool that arranges everything for you. So you don't have to configure a lot here and you have everything already built for you so you can focus on creating your own TypeScript application. So first let's go to task browse and here we have this uh, controller where we um, provide, this is the backend side, we provide the tasks and the tasks are in memory so we are defining them as a variable and then we are returning them. So the server is already running but you can start it with Ctrl T as before and select Kretas Start. And then I can open another window here. Let's say like that. And because the server is running on the port 5544, let's see, 5544. This means that if I trigger 5544 and the name of our namespace of our feature, which is task. So if I do lowercase task, I will get those tasks we defined here. So just a reminder, the routes in Kratos are created based on the features we have in this features directory. So if we have a task with a controller, this translates to a task route, which is lowercase. So if I get do a get I'm getting those elements. Let's move that. Let's persist that data so that it's separated from our application. So let's start with my way of doing that. So I do it using the command line. And there is this tool called pgcli. Let me open. That's the tool. It's a great tool. I've been using it for a long time. So in PostgreSQL, you have this PSQL, which is a client for PostgreSQL. But it's a very bare tool. PGCLI add some additional features we will explore in this video. But before we do that, we need to have a database and we need to have a table. When you are generating an application in Kretis, there is this file called config default, which has the configuration for the whole application, including database. So by default, it defines the database after the name of your application. So if you're generating an application called Tasky App, it will assume that the database has the same name. 
if you want to start this application, you need to create a database of the same name. So let's do that. So in PostgreSQL, we have this command called create db, and we can just say tasky app, and it's created. So now let's test it. So I can use pgcli and I can say tasky app to see if I'm connected. So it connects to this uh, table, uh, to this database. And now if I say slash d, which is, as you can see, list or describe tables, it should be empty because we don't have any tables yet. So now let's create our first table. In pgcli, we have this command called slash e. So we can edit a query in an external editor. So when I press, I can now create my query here. So I want to create a table, which will be task, and I will have three fields. So ID, which is serial, and this is a primary key. I will have name, which is text, and I will have done, which is uh, Boolean. So that's the first thing. When I save, the content of that editor is pasted here on the prompt. So now I can just press enter to execute this query and it's executed. So now if I press slash D, I see that I have uh, this table in my database. So it also shows the indexes. So I can just say DT to show only tables. Okay, so this table is uh, there and I can query it. So I can say select from task and it's empty. So we need to create data. So again, we can do slash E and now we can say insert into task and we need to define the fields we want to fill in. So in our case, we want to fill the name and the done field because the ID is serial and primary key, which will be auto incremented and values like that. And then we will switch to our editor and we will grab uh, this data over here and we will paste it here like that. And now we need to just, you know, clean it up a little bit something of that sort. There is, however, a problem with this query because we cannot use the double quotes in Postgres. So we need to edit this again and we can just change. And now when I save it, it's in my prompt. And if I press enter, I will execute this query. Now I can do a select and I should have those this data in my table and in my database. So now let's go back to VS Code instance and let's stop the server and let's start it again. Let's see if it works. So now we will remove this uh, part here and we will import the database from Kretis. We will create an alias DB for convenience. And here we will get the tasks from the database now. So we will do db from our table, which is task. And we need to do async here. So now if I save, I should have the same list. Let's see. It seems it works. Just to test it even further, let's um, go back to the command line and let's insert another task. So I will go to this editor and I will say I want to define name and uh, down field values. And let's say uh, maybe something like get 10k subscribers to my YouTube channel. <clears throat> and this will be false. So if you like this content, subscribe to my channel and help me reach this goal. Okay, so if I save it and I press enter, I inserted the, the new entry. Let's see if it's there. So it's we have now five records. Just a reminder, this 
serial key is being automatically incremented. So now if I go back to my application and I refresh it, I should have this new task here. And it's there because it's now persisted in the database. So as you can see, this was pretty straightforward again, nothing too complicated. I will improve that in the next episode. But for now, let's stop here. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.